Trusting in myself, I made a lot of mistakes Caused a lot of pain, was basically a disgrace If it wasn't for your spirit, I never would've learned Stuck up in this foolishness, but I'm gonna be wiser now uh, I thank you for renewing my mind Making me wiser now uh, And now I dedicate my time to be wiser Trusting in myself, I made a lot of mistakes Caused a lot of pain, was basically a disgrace If it wasn't for your spirit, I never would've learned Stuck up in this foolishness, but I'm gonna be wiser now uh, I thank you for renewing my mind, making me wiser now uh, And now I dedicate my time to be wise Okay, we are live on Kingston Avenue in Philadelphia, and I have Duff here with me. I was I was telling Duff that Duff that I seen I had something on the page, and the person asked me to please keep Duff in prayer. And this is the Duff that she was talking about. And the reason why she said that because she saw his arms. She saw his arms, and she saw how uh, how he looked, and she felt bad. And she said, please keep him in prayer. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And I'm going to interview him today. For the record, you tell the viewers, what's your name? My name's Ken Duff. Tim Duff? Ken. Ken Duff. Okay. Yeah. Now, how old are you, Duff? 37 years old. 37? Yes. Okay. Where are you from? From uh, Long Crest. Long who? North Long East. Crest, Philadelphia. Oh, okay. All right. Is that far from here? Not too far. All right. Good, uh... So they love they love you, Duff. <laughs> they love you, Duff. That's hey, what's up, you guys? So I'm gonna be jumping in and out of this video for the purpose of my electronics wasn't working good that day. My I didn't have a microphone, I didn't have speakers, you know, so the viewers can hear. And it was noisy outside. So it's gonna be some things Duff is gonna say you're probably not gonna hear. So I'm gonna highlight that. And then I'm also gonna give uh, some insight about certain things he said. I gotta throw this in before we come back into the video. Did you hear the women in the background screaming, hi Duff, we love you Duff. They, they love Duff around there. You know, the, the, the people around there love, he's like a celebrity around there. And what I try to show Duff is, people love you man with a genuine love. I mean, not only do the people around there love you, but you got people not only in the United States, but also in other countries that love you, you know, and 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 and, and is concerned about you. That be asking that. I haven't seen anything on Duff. Uh, I saw Duff on Frank, you know, on Moors Over Money. Have you seen Duff? We're praying for Duff, and they don't even know Duff. And you know, it's funny because that's the same way I felt. You know, I seen Duff. See, this is why it's important to do these interviews. It's, it's why it's important for people to be doing interviews with them because the world is watching. People from all around the world and in the United States is watching and they, de they develop a concern about this particular person. So um, when I saw Duff, the first time I saw Duff was on Morals Over Money with Frank. And that touched my heart. You know, when I seen him and I seen his hand, his arms and his legs, you know, that really touched my heart. That, that made me have some kind of concern and compassion towards him. And as I go down there, you know, I've always said, man, I, I, I hope I run into him so I can see him. You know, and, uh, you know, just try to talk. You know, sometimes maybe one person might talk to you about going to uh, the rehab and it might not work. And another person might come just in the nick of the time when you're thinking, about maybe you should go now. You might come at that right time to tell him, hey man, let's go. And he might say, you know what, I'll go. But that's, that's not, not, not the situation with Duff. Duff is not trying to go to rehab. Duff is not trying to get go to the hospital. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. But the thing is, is that people do have concern about Duff. And you see the women in the background were screaming that we love you, Duff. <laughs> so watch what else, Duff. Watch the rest of this interview. Good. I, I, I seen in the interview when Frank was asking you uh, 
about your parents and you say your parents was wealthy and but your dad keeps by your side or something like that? Yeah, my dad's very uh, supportive of me, you know, he tries to help me as much. You know, obviously he don't give me money while I'm out here. He used to, but he don't do it anymore. Either. You you understand why he don't do that? Yeah, I completely understand. Yeah, because he feels that you're destroying yourself and he don't want to yeah, be part of that. He don't want to be a part of that. Because if something happened to you out here, which it very well could be, that would be on a person's mind because they gonna feel like I gave him the bullet to shoot himself. Absolutely. He always, he always, he always tells me I'm constantly on. So here, Duff talks about his parents. He talks about his father. <clears throat> if you've seen the Morris Over Money interview with Frank, he told the viewers that his dad was rich. His family was millionaires. He's And he told us in this video that he's the black sheep of the family. His dad never done drugs, his mother never done drugs. He's the only one to choose to, to go down that path. His father at one time was very, very supportive of him. You know, by always giving him money even though he was out there in the streets. But as time went on, his dad cut him off from giving him any money. Now, if you look at it <laughs> in one point of view, you may say, oh, that's bad, man, that he cut his own son off. But if you really understand, if you see, as you keep watching this video and you see that his wounds, what those drugs is doing to his body, that's going to eventually kill Duff. And the father has cut him off from giving him money because no father wants to be responsible for, for giving their son or their daughter the money that's going to have them looking like that until they destroy themselves and die because that'll always be on that father's conscience that I helped him to get to that grave. That'll bother you. You know, that's like giving um, the bullet to somebody who wants to kill himself. They have the gun, but they don't have the bullet. So they need the money to buy the bullet or they need the bullet and you give them the bullet and they go in the house and they blow their brains out. That will always be on your mind because you'll always know, man, I gave him that very same bullet that he shot in his head. You know, so I think that's a good thing. I, I, I would do the same thing. You know, if I if I had, if my daughter or my son was on drugs like that and they was asking me for money so they could get high, I wouldn't do that, especially if I seen that it was destroying their body like that because love won't do that. You know, I'm not gonna help you destroy yourself. I'm here to try to help you get into the rehab, help you to get off of those drugs, but I'm not gonna help you. I'm not gonna give you money to, to put those drugs in your system so you can destroy yourself. So I understand uh, his dad, you know, and I commend his dad for that. You know, so we just got to keep Duff in prayer, man, because I know that this has hurt his mother and his father. And these are the type of things we do when it's like when I was out there, you know, gang banging and selling drugs and doing the things I was doing. My mom knew I was out there doing bad. It was hurting my mom. And then when I got when I got caught and went to prison, it even hurt my mom real bad to hear how much time they was giving me. You know, that hurt my mom. And we don't think, man, when we making these dumb decisions, you know, with our lives, these decisions that it don't just affect us, but it also affect our loved ones, our parents, our children, you know, our brothers, our sisters, you know, people who love you, that affects them. So it ain't just you, it affects them too. So I understand this dad. Let's get back to it. So you grew up with both parents in the house? Yes. Okay. Was your parents very, huh? Very good, very good family. Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh so did your your dad do drugs? No. Your mom? No. I'm what? like the only one. Like you are the, the only one that made that choice? Yeah. Okay. So did you uh did you finish high school? Yes. You did? Yes, did? What did you do after you uh finished high school? Did you go to college? Um I went to trade school. What you what you learned in trade? I was doing um graphic arts. Okay. Yeah, but uh I never really finished it. And I was I was going I was thinking about going to the, like the army and then I could never pass that drug test. <laughs> Oh, is that right? So, uh, so um, you see that um, Duff graduated from high school. You know, you got a, you got a lot of them out there on the street that that graduated from high school, and believe it or not, some of them graduated from college. Some of them went to college and ended up dropping out of college, but some of them even made it to college. But the drugs interfere with their future. Duff graduated out of high school. He's not a he's not a he's not a high school dropout. He graduated. He went all the way through, got his diploma, walked down that aisle, 
and graduated from high school. When he got out, Duff said that he didn't stop there. He went to trade school to learn graphic arts. You know, that would have been a promising career. He even went so far as to, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get into the army. That would have been a promising career to him because who knows what that would have done, the military would have done for him. He could have came out and been a police officer and, and went from a, 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 a police officer to high ranking all the way to a lieutenant, even a captain. Who knows? A detective, you know, uh, uh, who knows? You know, what his career, what his life what path he would have went down if he'd have chose this? You know, could have been a doctor, could have been anything. You know, he could have went in there and became, you know, into the medical field and got out and became a doctor. Who knows? You know, been some big time lieutenant in the military. You know, a high paying uh, uh, sergeant or a captain or, or or whatever. But the thing that messed him up, he said when he went to go apply for the test, he could never pass the drug test. See, drugs is a hindrance. Drugs, and I, and I hope you're paying attention to this because I try to point these things out because I never know who's viewing this channel. You know, you you yourself could be 16, 17, 18 years old, smirk, smoking marijuana, and you're deciding that you want to be a doctor. You want to be a police officer. You want to be a judge. You want to be something in life. But that path you on of smoking weed right now your next step might be crack. Your next step might be heroin. And those things are going to stop you. It's going to block you from reaching your goal. So if you're watching this, learn from his mistakes. Learn from their mistakes. And don't go down that path. Don't go down that path. That's the purpose of me doing these videos. That's the purpose of me doing this interview. You know, I don't go down there to, to, to just showcase those people and make them look bad. I don't do that. My purpose of doing this video for them to tell their story is because I want to hear other people to listen to their story, to learn from their mistakes and don't go down that same path. Also, I offer, I try to offer them help. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that when you make the wrong choice to go down the wrong path, it would deviate you from the plan, from your goal of whatever you're trying to reach. He wanted to be a graphic and get into graphic arts but he never made it because the drugs took a hold of him and kept him in the streets and when when did you start doing drugs I started doing drugs at a very young age uh, I guess I was like 13 13? Yeah, 13 well, you remember the first what, what drug was it that you took? marijuana marijuana? yeah you know they say marijuana is the gateway to major drugs sure yeah Absolutely. once you take that step it's like after a while your system becomes immune to it and now you want to try something different and different and different. And, it, and, and that's how we get to where we are at today. Right? Absolutely. Okay, so we see, we learned through this interview that Duff said he started doing drugs at the age of 13. At the age of 13, um, he started doing drugs. He started going down that path at the age of 13. And look. At the age of 13, all the way into 37, he's still on that same path. And look at the damage that you're gonna see when you keep watching this video of what those drugs are gonna do to his body and how it has him homeless in the streets because of that very same choice. I point these things out, not to make look, Duff look bad. I point these things out for the parents that think it's okay that my son at 15 or 16 smokes marijuana because it's not okay. Because marijuana is the gateway to hardcore drugs. It is. Hey man. Yeah. Yeah. Same situation. I just, um, I wanted to say one thing. Yeah, go ahead. You know how they say that weed isn't the gay drug? I think yeah. it is. Gateway? Okay, right. I agree. Not for everyone. Everybody's different. But the ones that end up like this, yeah, that was the gay drug, you know? Yeah. So, I don't believe it. But I, before I just say, nah, uh nah, uh But then once I got to this point, it was because once you dare to smoke the weed, then you dare to do everything else. Yeah. You know, you start doing marijuana, then after a while, you get tired of marijuana. Your body becomes immune to it. You want a different high. And you're hanging around people that's telling you, oh man, crack, it take you to a whole nother level. It's better than marijuana. Oh, yeah? And then you start trying that. 
Then you start trying heroin, right? Mm -hmm. Then you start trying um, fentanyl, and you get a hold of that fentanyl that's that's mixed with horse tranquilizer, and meat tenderizer, and rat poison, and gasoline, and it start burning up your body like it's doing everybody bodies down there in, in uh, Philadelphia. And I know you might say, well, that's in Philadelphia. I live in California, or I live in New York, or I live way on uh, the West Coast in, in Detroit. That was circulate like cancer all over the United States. That was circulating. And, and it ain't just happening in Philadelphia. It's happening in other places too. But um, I just try to point these type things out. You know, parents, watch your children, man. Don't let your children smoke no weed. Watch them. If they come in smelling like weed, it's time for you to start getting on them. It's time for you to start being hard on them. Because if you don't, they can end up just like Duff. They can end up just like that, you know? So you have to watch your children. It ain't cool to smoke weed. So what do people say uh, that, that it's okay to smoke weed? Why? It's not cool because that's a gateway to hardcore drugs. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I interview a lot of people and they all start out with marijuana before they got to these, these hardcore drugs. They all started and they all agree. You heard Duff? Duff said, absolutely. I said, man, they say that marijuana is a gateway to drugs to hardcore drugs. What did he say? Absolutely. And he's speaking by experience. He's not speaking by what he heard this person or that person say. And I interview a lot of people and they all say they start around, they started out with marijuana and they'll tell you that yes, it is a gateway to hardcore drugs. You know, it's like a person that start doing alcohol. He don't start drinking a six pack. He start with just a little shot, you know, just a little half a can of beer. You know, sipping with his homies. Oh, pass the beer. Take a little sip, pass it around, take another sip, and he finished. After a while, he want more. He start drinking a can of beer. Then a six-pack. <laughs> you know, and then two six-packs. Just like a cigarette. You start off with just a cigarette, and now you got a pack of cigarettes. And then you go up to two packs. You do smoking two packs a day. You know, so, you know, the Bible teaches us give no place to the devil. Don't give him an opportunity. You know, so that's what I'm trying to point out. Duff said... That marijuana is a gateway to hardcore drugs. He said absolutely. He agreed with it. He's been out there from the age of 13 all the way to 37. He agrees with that. Did you ever work? Oh, yeah. It's funny, guys. I'm always... I'm like a worker. Hey, Dave. What's up, Dave? <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, where did you work? I'm like a workaholic when I'm sober, or like even when I'm not sober. I, I, I'm always active. I'm always, you know, trying to do something. But I worked at a 7-Eleven up in Cinnamon, New Jersey. I worked at uh, Acme Night Crew, okay. Bright Night Crew, Range Brook, Warehouse Manor. Uh, okay. So know, let me ask you something personal. Let me ask you something personal. The name of this show is Keep It 100 on Kingston Avenue. So that's exactly what I want you to do with us today is keep it 100. What particular, what, what is your drug preference? My drug preference? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I really, I like, I really love, I guess you could say crack. I, I'm like, crack? I'm big into crack. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, I know people probably but like, I, I do the dope and shit to get to, to be well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. But I like really spend money on crack a lot. Okay. And and you, I think you was telling Frank. That, I mean, uh, that you do the the fentanyl and the trank. Fentanyl trank. Is that is that what messes your arm up? Is that what eats eats yeah. your flesh up? Because crack don't do that. Yeah, the trank is a whole new thing. I mean, it's horrible. Uh, the detox is horrible. They don't have no means of you know detox for it. Yeah. You know what I mean, they, yeah. they, they 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 don't know how to how to, how to help us. It's longer. It's by far the worst. What's longer? What do you mean longer? It's, it's a longer detox than the dope. You know? Oh, yeah. It's a way harder detox. Oh, okay. So it's like once you get hooked on it, it's hard to get off. Yeah. So, Duff says that he loves doing crack. He went from marijuana to doing crack. He says he loves doing crack. But then he got hooked on fentanyl mixed with trank. Whenever they say trank, trank is short for tranquilizer. And that is horse tranquilizer. Yeah, the same thing that they shoot into a horse and cause an 800,000 pound horse 
to fall down to the ground. That's what these people have mixed in their tranquilizer because mixed in their fentanyl because they're not getting 100 percent uh, fentanyl. It's cut with horse tranquilizer. That's just one of the, the things it's cut with. Horse tranquilizer. This is what causes the people in that area to be slumped over. Because you could just look, me being down there for a while, and, and I'm experienced now with, with different drugs and what the drugs have affected people. Because crack don't cause people to slump over like that. Crack does not eat up a person's body like that. That's the fentanyl mixed with horse tranquilizer, which causes them to slump over. But it's also mixed with gasoline. It's also mixed with gasoline, and that gasoline is what's burning up their body. You ever got gasoline on your hand? You have it on there too long, it start burning. So just imagine they're, picking, they're putting this in with the dope. They're mixing this in with the dope, and it gets in your body, and that that burning, that poisonous that's in that body, that's what Juan was telling us in the last interview that I had uploaded. He was saying that poison gets in your body, and they try to figure, it try to escape the body, it try to get out because it knows it don't belong in it, so it's trying to get out, and that's why these people have these holes in their legs, and that's why these persons have all this burnt. Um, uh, effects on their skin because that's the gasoline and they know that this is gasoline they know it's not good but they're so hooked on it they're so addicted to it it's so much power it's, it has so much power to it that they can't let it go they can't walk away from it. that's what he's saying that's what duff is saying he said this particular drug it has a longer detox you know, you're not going to get off it in a couple of days I don't know exactly how long it takes but he says there's a longer detox than heroin or crack it's harder to get off You know So That's why it's not good To get on this fentanyl Mixed with drink Because it's harder to get off And I even was told They got rat poison in there And quite a few other stuff Man And it's messing people Body and their skin up But just look at What Duff is saying You know Duff is saying That um, this drug This particular drug Is hard to get off You know So if anybody Who's even thinking about Man I want to try that You know They say fentanyl is good they say you can get it real easy down there in uh, Philadelphia. I'm thinking about going down there. You're not just going down there to get fentanyl. You're going down there to get fentanyl mixed with drink, mixed with meat tenderizer, and mixed with rat poison, and mixed with gasoline. So if you're thinking about it, if you know somebody who's thinking about them, show them this video. Show them this video. And that's why I make this, these videos. I make these videos to bring forth awareness because I'm trying to raise awareness. Don't do this, you know? And I'm sorry, I'm not like one of these guys that's just going to show the video of people and keep riding. I don't do that. You know, my purpose of going down there is to help these people. And I, I do interviews with them to allow them to tell their story so that I and you can see how they ended up, how they ended up on this path. You know, and it's all about a choice. Nobody put a gun in your head. You know, everybody got different reasons why they did it. You know, you have some women down there that's been raped by a family member, or by a father, or by a brother, and it mentally really messed them up, you know? And they can't deal with reality, that type of reality, so they started doing marijuana, or they started drinking. They got around other people that's trying other drugs, like crack, telling them, oh man, this will take you to another level. And they started jumping, drug jumping. You know, they jumped from marijuana to crack, from crack to cocaine, from cocaine to heroin, from heroin to fentanyl. And in their area, they can't get fentanyl no more, but everybody's telling them, oh, you can get it down there in Philadelphia, right there on Kingston and Avenue and Alligator Avenue. It's, it's plenty over there. And they run down there. See, that person that told them about the fentanyl down there, they didn't tell them that it's mixed with horse tranquilizer, that it's mixed with um, meat tenderizer, that it's mixed with gasoline and rat poison. They ain't tell them that. They just told them, oh, it's plentiful down there. And they go down there and they get, they take it. They get slumped over, they feel so good, and when they wake up in the morning, somebody just stole their purse, then stole their shoes, and now they don't have no money to get back home, their phone is gone, and now this drug is starting to kick in again, and now, you know, they doing what they gotta do to get their next fix. A lot of people down there get stuck, man. You know, I'm trying to raise, raise awareness. Drugs ain't good. Yeah, so I wanna ask you this question. Because the viewers saw you on Frank, and on my channel, the viewers been asking to pray for you. So do you mind showing your arm? Uh, yeah, I, I, it's gotten worse since then. Can we, can we see it? Yeah. Let me see. So, 
so so it's bleeding. Yeah. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it get dry, do it dry up, or oh, you said you had it on your legs too, right? Yeah. Yeah. This one's healing up a little bit. What's healing up? This one. Your leg. This one. You had tattoos on the I I I I I really good tattoo. It's got a lot of money on it. So do do you know? <laughs> and then, what time is it? Yeah, like ten, right? <laughs> like ten? <laughs> man, you would think you would think it's in the daytime here, man. I'm talking about it's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people out here on the street. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, man. So it's not clearing up at all, huh? Not really. I mean, I I I I, I have sources. I should start cleaning it up. I yeah, that's that. That's the other arm look the same. Yeah. Let me see it. Oh wow, man. Worse, man. Yeah, that looks worse, man. Oh, so uh, you see what I saw, but I'm gonna tell you, watching it in the video is one thing, but actually seeing it with your own two eyes, right in front of it, his arms, his legs is bad too, but not like his arms. You know, his arms, man, it's 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 truly a flesh eating drug. It's eating up his flesh, eating it bad. I mean, and the bad thing about it. Duff, Duff don't take care of him. You know, Duff don't, he don't treat him. He, he, he has that, that sweatshirt on that he's been wearing for probably a long time that he's not cleaning. And all he's doing is just putting it over it. You know, so he's not, he's not putting ointment on it. He's not putting medication on it. He's not wrapping it and protecting it with the right bandage. He's not doing anything, man. And, and that's, that's, that's really bad because you're, you're going to get, he's already got an infection and he said it's not getting any better. You know, and, and because it's not getting any better because he's not treating it. And even if he was treating it, what's the purpose of treating it when you're going to keep putting this very same drug in your body that's causing it to eat up your flesh the way it's eating it up? Man, this, don't do fentanyl and training. Don't do that. Don't do drugs, period. But don't come out to Philadelphia looking for fentanyl. Because in your neighborhood they don't have it anymore. Because probably in your neighborhood they had the pure fentanyl. It ain't pure in fit in Philadelphia. And really, you can't trust it anywhere because you never know when you go to purchase this drug what's in it until you get hooked on it and you keep wanting it and it's going to keep doing that to your body. Um. So it's, it's it's really tearing up his body, man. And and I'm I'm raising awareness by showing this. And I'm gonna tell you something. His his body is worse than Gene. Gene's body is bad too with his arms and his legs, but it's not this bad. Uh, you see Juan. Juan is bad, but it's not. It's nowhere near bad like even like Gene, and it's definitely not as bad as as uh, as Duff. Like I said, with my own two eyes, Duff is the worst. There's, there's hundreds of people out there, and I was told that there's some people out there with holes in their legs where you can see their bones. I haven't seen that yet. You know, but the worst that I've seen out of the, uh, of the people that I met with my own two eyes, Duff is the worst. You know, and every time I see somebody who has that skin problem, their particular drug that they're on is the is the fentanyl. They call it Fetty. You know, it's and, and they say they call it Trank. You know, because Trank is short for horse tranquilizer. But it ain't just a horse tranquilizer. Like I said, a horse tranquilizer causes them to nod off. And it causes them to sleep slumped over. But it's the gasoline that's mixed in there that's causing their body to burn up, burn their skin up the way it's doing. They skin up. The gas is terrible for your skin. It's terrible. Anyway, so uh, man, you gotta, we gotta keep Duff in prayer, man. Just, I try to take Duff to the hospital, man. He don't want to go. I try to put him in a rehab. You gonna see that later on. He don't want to go. So we gotta keep Duff in prayer. Keep all the people on Kingston Avenue and Allegheny Avenue in prayer. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end this video right now because it's already it's already like 30 minutes and I and I don't want to hold you hostage for an hour. So um, this is like 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it right now. This is part one. Then I'm gonna upload part two concerning Duff. We're still on Duff interview, and I want you to watch this all the way to the end on the next upload i'm gonna have some uh educational uh videos about this drug and uh we're gonna continue the video 
the interview with um with Duff so you can see what's going on. And y'all pray for Duff, man, because Duff real Duff really looks bad. Duff is getting skinny. You can see the bones in his face. And this news that I'm going to show you later, I got a news clip that tells you when people use that trank, they don't last for about, about two years or keep using it. They end up dying. You know, and he and Duff already admitted that he did a whole year already. You know, he said for a whole year, his kid, cause he used to, he used to do heroin. And there's no more heroin down there now. It's now fentanyl mixed with trank. You know, and they got all that other poisonous stuff in there. So Duff... According to the news, he only he only got another year left. If he keep putting that poison in his body every day, he only got another year left. According to the news, I'm gonna show you that clip on the next in, on the next upload. But y'all keep Duff in prayer and keep all the people down there. Keep man, I'm I'm trying to raise awareness down there. I'm trying to talk to everybody down there about that drug. Hopefully, you know, they'll, they'll come to their senses and get off of it. And hopefully for anybody that's watching this channel that's thinking about doing that, that they'll they'll change their mind. You know, to, and I'm not going to tell you, go try this drug or go try that, that drug because it's less dangerous. My message is don't do drugs at all. Just don't do it all because you'll end up, you'll end up drug hopping. You'll jump from marijuana to crack to heroin to cocaine to, to fentanyl to this trank. You know, that's my thing. So stay tuned for the next upload, uh, which will be coming up next after this video. All right. God bless you and thank you for watching.